Okay, so let's make a context-free grammar for this language, which is the set of all strings of the form some number of A's, some number of B's, some number of C's, where the number of A's, which is what I is, is not equal to the number of B's, which is J. And what we want to do is to make a context-free grammar for this. Notice that the number of C's here, which is K, has no relation to the number of A's or B's, which are I and J here. So what we can do is we can forget about the C's and we just focus on the A and B part and then we can just focus on the A and B part and then deal with the C's later. So every context-free grammar has a start variable. So let's make a start variable here and I'm going to label it like this. So let's think about how we're going to structure this. How do we actually tell whether or not the counts of two variables are the same or not? That seems a little weird. All that we need to do is to think about this in a slightly different way. Another way of rephrasing this same condition is to say i is less than j or i is bigger than j. It must be one of those two because they can't be the same. So how are we going to relate these two together? Well, we're going to have a variable that corresponds to the i less than j case and another variable that corresponds to the i bigger than j case. So I'm going to have two variables called a i less than j. It, you don't have to have the subscript here, it's just to help you. a i less than j, or a i bigger than j. So let's deal with the i less than j case. So i less than j. Well, that means that the number of a's is less than the number of b's. But the number of b's could be only one more than the number of a's, or way more than that. It could be anything, in principle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow ourselves to make A's and B's an equal number and then later allow ourselves to make as many more B's as we need to. So I'm going to say I'm going to have a rule like this. So I'm going to generate one A here, recursively go into the same variable with a B. So that means that I'm going to at this point be generating them an equal number, so one A for every B, but of course we gotta make at least one more B. So then I'm gonna have a variable right here which is called making Bs, or I'm just gonna call it B here, and its sole purpose is to make more Bs, that's it. So I'm gonna have more Bs right here. So this variable B is just going to spout off as many Bs as it wants at least zero, and it's important that it's at least zero. You can work it to where B makes at least one more, but I'm going to do it this way. Well, how are we going to relate the I less than J guy to the B guy? What I'm gonna do is notice that we have the same number right here and this guy only guarantees to get at least zero more Bs. Whereas A I less than J must generate at least one more B. And so therefore to get down to here, I'm going to have this be my rule. So in order to make a string at all, I must generate at least one B right here, which does not correspond to an A. And so therefore, whenever this makes a string, I must have at least one more B than A, which is exactly what we want. Well then now, the only thing that we have to deal with is dealing with the C's at the end, but again, they don't have any relation to the I and J numbers. So one easy way of doing this is to have a variable right here that goes after both of these because the condition of where the C's are does not depend on the A's and B's at all. So I'm going to have a variable C here which just spouts off C's and nothing else. And it's exactly the same idea as the B here, but it's used for a different purpose. Okay, so that handles the I less than J case. So we have equal number, and I guarantee to get at least one more because of this rule right here. And if we need more, I can just apply this rule as many times as I want. So now let's deal with the I bigger than J one. And it's gonna be a very similar idea. So I bigger than J is going to be A, A, I bigger than J, B. But then now, if we have more A's than B's, I need a way to spell off A's. And similarly, I must have at least one more A be generated. So here I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a variable called A, although it's kind of hard to distinguish now. Maybe I'll call it X, so that it's not hard to distinguish. So here I'm generating at least one more A, and then the X variable is gonna spell off more A's if I need to. So A, X, or empty. And so therefore, if we have the 
number of A's and B's not being the same, one is less than the other or the other way around. And so we're dealing with both of the cases independently and allowing ourselves to just deal in that specific case to generate the strings in that particular set.